Hello everyone and welcome to another wonderful segment of Arts at EPCC. Uh, I'm here with Dr. Yasmin Flores. Hello. And Dr. <laughs> Flores and I have switched seats. We've we have. switched roles. Yes. And I am going to interview her today <laughs> and she's going to give us all of the salient information Ooh. about her life and her art. So I yes. think we should all be very excited about this. So, <laughs> As is, as is necessary, welcome to Thank you. Arts at EPCC, Dr. Thank Flores. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Well, we're so glad to have you. Now, I want you to tell me officially, what is your title at EPCC, just so we know who we're talking to? This is a very good question. There's moments where I forget, too. <laughs> um, I am officially, now that I'm tenured, I am Associate Professor of Music. Isn't that fancy? That's very nice. Yay, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, and so that's one of my titles. I am also one of the co-coordinators for music at Valle Verde. I am also the coordinator of the CLIO program, which okay. is the credit for life experience option through the curriculum office here at EPCC. And so for those of you that are interested in the Clio program on the career and technical side, you can um, email me and you'll see my email throughout the show. So yes, Good. thank you. Very nice, very <laughs> nice. And I think we have to, what is it that we say in The Sound of Music, we begin at the beginning? I think that's what it is. Oh. Uh, so where are you from? I'm from El Paso, Texas, literally brought home from Providence Memorial Hospital. Uh, to just a couple of blocks away from here, from the studio, and grew up here, went to start at St. Raphael. Um, didn't like St. Raphael for some reason. I don't know. It, was, it actually started at St. Luke's, right across from Eastwood High School. Preschool was too much. Took a year off to find myself. Okay. And you were how old at this point? Four. Wow. Okay. Yes. You and had, so you had an early self discovery. Didn't I you? did. I told my mother, I had a little sit down with her, and I kind of <laughs> said, I don't really like this preschool business. So, you know, throwing a fake fishing rod into a swimming pool with no water to collect sponge fish just didn't do it for it you. It was not acceptable. Naps. I'm, what? Exactly. Right. Exactly. I have yeah. too much to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. Play me some music. And I'm like, are we? No, this isn't going to happen. Anyway, took a year <laughs> off. Uh, then I was required by law to enter school uh, in kindergarten, St. Raphael's. Then didn't like that so much. Scottsdale I loved. And I, I stayed there for six years. Loved it. Um, so Scottsdale, um, first grade through sixth grade, had some great teachers there. And some of whom my boss knows. Blaine knows a lot of the teachers because his mom worked um, YISD. And so I mentioned some of these folks, Cal Bone, Don Britton, Pamela Davis, uh, Miss Bentley, Mr. De La Rosa. Oh my goodness. I still remember all my sixth grade teachers. Um, and some of them, unfortunately, of course, have passed away. Um, but uh, Miss Fernandez passed away um, just, I want to say, a couple years ago. That was third grade. Anyway, Eastwood Middle School, Robert Dahl. That was my teacher. Oh, yes. Yes. We both knew Robert We Dahl. both knew Robert He Dahl. taught at, East, at uh, Islada High School when I was there. Okay. Awesome. He and taught English. Of course. Yes. Yeah. And he was, he was my English teacher in seventh grade. Um, sadly died after my eighth grade year, um, but he was phenomenal. He used to get up on the desk and spray Windex into his mouth. <laughs> that explains a lot. Doesn't it? <laughs> Those were my teachers, those, the fine teaching. <laughs> I remember Robert Dahl, uh, when I was at Isleta, the, the big news at Isleta was that he made everyone learn the, one of the monologues from uh, As You Like It, All's the All the World's a Stage. So all those students in his classes would run around the halls all day long trying to remember that, model, that, oh my gosh. <laughs> that, that portion of the play right. so that they could get it right. He oh. had a fascination with Miss Havisham. Oh, mm -hmm. we are. We, I can understand that. Yes, and um, also, of course, with the Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. So it taught us the Greek mythology, uh, Great Expectations, mm -hmm. um, Charles Dickens. Um, that's the, oh my gosh, that's the quote. Then I'm trying to remember the famous quote from um, A Tale of Two Cities. And I can't remember. It was the best of times. It was the, it was the worst of yes, times. Yes, thank you. I couldn't, I was trying to drag it into my head, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's it. 
And so we, we studied great literature with him. He was phenomenal. Uh, went to Eastwood for a short time and then graduated from Hanks. Oh, okay. And so it was, uh, yeah, and had wonderful instructors um, at both at Eastwood and, and at Hanks. Um, terrific, terrific uh, music instructors. And I took private lessons the entire time with um, Lindo Nantia for two years and then Vin Richards. And some folks know Vin Richards. I'm from that school, from Vin Richards. She's an institution in and of herself. And she taught <laughs> piano and clarinet. So Zeke Mesa knows her um, as a pianist. And I told him one day, I was like, I took with Vin Richards, he's like, the piano teacher? I'm like, the clarinet teacher. She was mainly <laughs> clarinetist. It's just kind of funny. Uh, she played with El Paso Symphony um, in, in her heyday. Uh, she taught my band director. So Vin is timeless. I had her in the 90s. I saw her again 20 years later. She looked the same. She looked the same, according to my band director, when she had her in the early 80s. <laughs> she doesn't age. She found the Fountain of Youth. It's in her backyard. I've seen it. I wonder if she still has it. I think, I bet she does. I mean, I, I bet she does. I think she... Contact I, Vin. Right, <laughs> right for the Fountain of Youth. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and so she's, she's really terrific and taught me so many things on this thing that's sitting here in front of us right now that we're dancing around. Which is? A clarinet. Dun, da, da, da. Ta da! Except it's in half. You broke it. I did. <laughs> you know what's a very funny story? Some people, some students, horror stories from instrument repair. I've heard of young children messing around, leaving this on the sofa, and somebody sits on it and they crack oh. it. Right in half. Oh, how horrible. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't lay it like that. But anyway, yes. And so there are times when, now this is a professional horn, but the, but the student model are polypropylene. And so okay. they're like a rubber plastic material, right? Just like the bassoons. So the bassoons, clarinets, and the bassoons are actually decent, the polypropylene ones. You can't really tell too well the difference between a maple bassoon and a polypropylene. The clarinets, you kind of can. Really? A little bit, yeah. But they, they have improved. Um, anyway, so this, this part is metal, and underneath this is grenadilla wood. But with a polypropylene, it, it'll snap. And so this whole part gets chopped off when they, when they break it. And can that be repaired? <sighs> Not really. I don't think so, yeah. no. Because at that point, you'd have to be, like, melting plastic, and Ugh. then you destroy the keys. It, no, you really can't. You can buy the joint by itself without the keys and just repair it that way. How did you come to play the clarinet? Uh, it was a funny story. Um, there was a man named Mr. First, uh, who was the band director at Scottsdale, um, my fifth grade year, and then we got a new band director. But Mr. First walked into our fifth grade class and asked who would like to be in band. Well, because I needed to join the crowd, I was like, oh, okay, sure, I'll play the, yes, me too, right? And so, uh, and so, yeah, so he put me on the list. And I came home and I told mom, and she said, well, you need to either play the flute or the clarinet. I said, but I wanted to play the saxophone. She said, that's a boy's instrument. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> so, she, so we got the clarinet, and I started playing. And what fascinated me right away, right off the bat, was that I could play anything I wanted by ear, right? And so, um, so I did, like, I learned how to play taps. That was the very first thing I learned. Well, now that's uplifting, isn't right? it? <laughs> <laughs> and then I had a fascination with the theme song from This Old House. Okay. Do you know that, so the old This Old House with Bob Vila. Yes, I remember, remember the so, show. Yes. There's a clarinet that plays the whole theme at the very end. Da 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 di da 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 di da 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 And I looked up the tune. It's it's actually like an old jazz standard. Okay. Um, so I sat there, like ending sixth grade, knowing up to the high C, and I was practicing that tune by ear, and I would play it over and I would play it over and over. 
I don't remember it now, but but wow. I know for hours because I wanted to play that song. And this was like my little music making machine. And I, I wanted to play anything and every tune that I'd ever learned <laughs> in my life. And so I was so excited. And it's, so to show you how old I am, for those of you that are under 30, um, I remember the Division of Beat book and getting to lesson one and we had to practice lesson one. And then I flipped the page and I started seeing all these new notes and I was like, what did these mean? <laughs> I want to know what this means. And you couldn't email the teacher. You couldn't text the teacher mm -hmm. because that wasn't a thing because the computer didn't it, exist. It didn't really exist. It existed in the old Apple Macintosh form with a screen this big ridiculous and a mach and machinery this big right yeah. yeah i had one of those it was oh did you really oh, yeah. that's exciting oh, scott yeah. still had six of them and once every two weeks each class would be allowed to send half their class to go and play where where in the world is carmen san diego <laughs> <laughs> or oregon trail that's, that's funny that's what we were allowed to do in the computer lab and so um, that's where technology was when I was young. <laughs> and so, right. And so now it's kind of funny because, yeah, now you can text your teacher. My students text me. Mm -hmm. I think everybody in El Paso probably knows my cell phone number mm -hmm. um, <laughs> because I've given it out to so many students. I mean, my thing is I, I like to do things in a hurry. I'm always in a hurry. And so it gets on my nerves if somebody's waiting on me, right? Like, do you ever, I don't know if you have that same sense of urgency. Oh, yeah. And so I think to myself, well, what if I were the student and I were in front of my computer and Blackboard quit working, mm -hmm. right? Like, what do I do? And so I try to be that teacher that's like available at midnight, you know, send me a text. I do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of us do. And, and more so in the arts, I think, because we do night shows things go wrong um you know or or it, the preparation for the shows also warrants us giving out our cell phone mm -hmm. because let's say the kids are headed to the show there's an accident on i-10 we're missing the tenor voice in right. the choir whatever it is right and it's detrimental when you have a music student or a theater student, theaters, that would be bad if it was a main role, right? Mm -hmm. If they were stuck on I-10 and the show starts in 30 minutes or something. So uh, yeah, we give out our cell phones. It's a, it's a, it's a godsend because it is. I don't know how many times I have texted, where are you? Right. Why aren't you here now? Right. Yeah, exactly. I'm coming, blah, 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 <laughs> okay. I'll expect you in five minutes. Right. Drive safely. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. and, and, it, and it, you're exactly right. It's how I stay in touch with almost every student I have, especially students who are involved in productions. Right, exactly. Yeah, and, and music appreciation, I mean, I give them myself, but nobody, they're kind enough, I mean, to not bother me so much. I don't mind. Occasionally, I do get the overachiever, right, who's like, can you check this really quick before I turn it? Can you check this? Because I think on number seven, like, I'm not sure. Like, did you want seven paragraphs or just five? Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, one would suffice. Like, <laughs> yes. like, you didn't need to write me five, but, mm -hmm. uh, but I will sit there and I will read it. And that's the other funny thing is a lot of students don't think that we read mm. the concert essays. Like... I'll tell you why we read them, especially if we performed and you went to our performance. I want to know what my students are thinking. One student in particular, funny story, I have a bad habit, okay? Listen up, kids. Those of you that play the clarinet and saxophone, this is tacky. <laughs> that. And what it is, and I don't know, like I just always did that for years and years. So I had a student go to a performance. And it, I was playing with the El Paso Clarinet Quartet, which, by the way, check out the El Paso Clarinet Quartet. That's a group I perform with, and we haven't performed in a while, and we need to. Um, and we, all of us were doing that. We were all, you get spit. You get water in these keys, because spit goes in, water condensation, right? And speaking of, I'll, I'll slap one of these on here. 
uh, and and it's gross, and the and the water starts to come out, and then it gurgles. Oh. So you hear like, ah, and you're like, oh, nope, <laughs> right? Well, anyway, in the concert report, he explained that that was very annoying, and that I should use instead cigarette paper. True story. So from now on, I do bring my cigarette paper with me or my swab, right? And I dab the swab, I dab the pad onto the swab so I can absorb, right, some of the liquid. I know. Anyway, so. Now, now tell us, please, you've already told me once before, mm -hmm. I want to know what these are called. Uh-huh, these are called reeds. Yes, but you call them something else. I do, they're my little personalities. There we go. And, and here's the thing, so you can, you can educate me. On Beta, there was a movie about the Wizard of Oz where the witch had 20 different heads. Really? Yes, there is a Beta version of the Wizard of Oz. Back, if you don't know what Beta is, think back to VHS. VHS was the precursor to DVD, right? Well, there was a... Was it Sony that did beta? I think so. Yeah, Sony, God, S Sony, Sony. Uh, Sony also created the mini disc player. And that was a good try. Good try, Sony. I, don't sue me, Sony. Anyway, <laughs> maybe we cut that part out. Okay. Um, yeah, so they had these things called beta tapes and they were a little bit smaller than the VHS, mm -hmm. right? I remember those. And sturdier too, good quality. Always quality with the Sony. And the beta tape uh, did not have very many movies, <laughs> but one of them was this version of The Wizard of Oz. And the witch had what looked like freezers. So, she, she, so like Dorothy, it's a very strange version of The Wizard of Oz that you'll need to check out. Dorothy walks into the witch's like mansion or whatever, and she walks into this huge room. It's larger than the studio, right? It appears that way. And there, it looks like like freezers at Albertsons or something. And there's a doors, 20 doors. Oh, I vaguely remember this now. Okay, and on, in each compartment, there's a head. I remember this. Okay, you remember this now? So there's a head sitting there, and the witch tells her, I want your head. She wants Dorothy's head. I vaguely remember this. Yes, that. and then she removes her head, and she switches it out for another head. <laughs> anyway. This is the moment at which Dr. Flores has to lick the reed to make it work, just so you all know what's happening. It has to be moist in order to function. It does. What it is is that if you wanted to learn more about the logistics of the clarinet, the thin part of the reed is like really good paper, like the kind of paper you want to use for your resume. It's about that thick. And so it warps, right? So if it, so you have to kind of, wet it and I flatten it out, then I put it on my clarinet. I like to wet the bottom as well. There, Some clarinets don't believe in wetting the bottom. And that's a, that's a totally different school of thought. This is the ligature that I'm tightening. All the parts of the clarinet. So I have, I, we have a mic over here. That's why I'm leaning. Okay. Our producer told me, if you're gonna play, play into this microphone over here. So, uh, so this is a clarinet and every, the thing with these reeds and clarinet players are probably laughing in glee because they're in agreement. Every single one of these reeds sounds different. That's why they're like different personalities. And sometimes it's worse for double reed players because double reed players make their own reeds. Oh, wow. At least we buy ours made, <laughs> All right? Like let somebody else handle that. You can make your own clarinet reeds, uh, but it's, it's challenging, it's time consuming. So they come in boxes of 10, out of the box of 10, and I use Van Dorn Rula Picks, uh, I get two or three that are good. And the rest are kind of duds. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, so you wind up spending between $25 and $30 on a box of 10 and three are good. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it's because these are real reeds, this is like cane right. that grows in a marsh, right? 
they chop them, they split them, they sand them down, and this is essentially what you have. So each one was, I mean, it's like humans or something. They're all different. They're all, no, no two are the same. So, and when they're making the reeds, they have no earthly idea whether they're going to function properly or not. They're just. <clears throat> if you, depends, if you ask the company, they'll say they oh, do. I'm sure. Right, yeah. Because it, the way Van, I, I'll, I'll say my assumption is with Van Doren is that they have a mechanism that probably lays like a Xerox machine. We as clarinet players know that most Van Dorens, I'm trying to remember, yeah, the left side is thicker than the right side. So that's got to be a mechanism that lays flat this way, right? That shaves down too much on the right. And that is the Van Doren reed. And I mean, I, I love Van Dorens. I've always used them. It would be sacrilegious for me to not use a Van Doren reed. Um, there are plastic reeds, so there's the Leger reeds and all this. Um, too much information on the clarinet, but... Not at all. Uh, yeah, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, there's so many logistics to it. The clarinet, what's beautiful about it is it's one of the most versatile instruments in the world. We play every single style except for rap, I think. I think that's the only genre that I can think of. We play in ska, we play in, uh, clarinet is used in klezmer, of course. It's rock, probably not so much, unless it was some kind of, you know, interesting, odd thing that they wanted to incorporate. But, uh, but certainly rock, no, and the other one, and rap. Everything else has clarinet. Jazz, wow. jazz, oh, yeah. I mean, that was one of the first instruments. Uh, in, in the early jazz age, made famous by Benny Goodman and Artie Shaw, who people don't give enough credit to. Artie Shaw was the better clarinet player. Really? Yeah, he was. He was, uh, Benny Goodman was a technician and he, he was um, a, what's the word I'm looking for? A great businessman. He knew how to sell himself. Artie didn't. And, and that was, this frustrated Artie so much that he quit. Really? Cold turkey. Cold turkey. And I think he became an artist or a carpenter. It's like a totally... Just, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. He stopped. He just stopped. And the day he died was that famous tsunami that hit. What, um, it was like in the year, I want to say like maybe 2001, 2002, around there. There was a huge tsunami that hit. Uh, Asia, some parts of Asia, mm -hmm. and like remember that. wiped out not only population, land, everything. He died the same day. Wow. And he got kind of like bumped on the newscast. <laughs> and so even in death, he chose to be kind of forgotten. I thought that was so interesting. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Now he's not, he's not Stardust. He may have a recording of Stardust. Okay. He made. All the jazz songs are all Hoagie standard. Hoagie Carmichael is who I'm thinking of. The writer. Right, Hoagie Carmichael. Yes, the writer. But the performers, it could have been anybody because right. they're standards. Right. Yeah, so anybody can pick it up and play it. Louis has, I think, a version. Yeah, he is does. It? Yeah, Louis Armstrong has a version of Stardust that I like. I had an aunt who went to Indiana University. Oh, wow. And they had a Stardust room there that she talked about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he was, I think he studied at Indiana University. Maybe. Oh. Let's hope I'm not wrong about it. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they'll get lots of emails. Right, right. Yes. Are you going to play for us? Yeah, I mean, whatever I'm, I'm, we I brought it, it just basically to kind of demonstrate. And I usually use the Weber Concerto number no. two, the Palaka. Lovely. Thank you. Very nice. You gotta check your bridge key. <laughs> it is necessary to always check your bridge key. Yes, that's right. Any sixth graders that are out there learning the clarinet. <laughs>
that's how long have you studied? 30 years I've been playing this thing. 30 years, 1991 wow. is when I started to play. And, and uh, funny story, um, when I opened the thing for the first time, the ligature is usually a metal ligature. And I thought it was a seal. So I just ripped it off and dumped it and like probably stepped <laughs> on it, took the reed and shoved it into the mouthpiece. I had a hell of a time getting it out. <laughs> then, uh, finally, uh, went to my band director and she's like, where's your ligature? And I was like, oh, put it away. <laughs> like, was I supposed to keep it? So she skipped me. She just passed me. She was like, you need to go buy a new one. And she just walked. <laughs> I can't deal with it. Right, I can't. I just <laughs> can't. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a very funny story. Um, Jill Sylvie Barty was my first band director, and she was a clarinet player, too. So I had, I had a great clarinet upbringing, which also helped with, with all of this. Yes. Very fun. Yeah. Well, I, uh, it's a beautiful instrument. You play it beautifully. We're Thank lucky you. to have heard the playing. <laughs> my stylings. Your stylings, yeah. <laughs> So uh, what's in the future? We're rolling down, but what's in the future for the music division, the music discipline? For the music discipline, um, great thing. So we get, we have a room in the new building and I'm hoping that, um, that we move in there by spring. We're hoping that this new building helps us to kind of clean up some of our rooms because we have all this like extra furniture, extra instruments lying around. And that will bring new students because okay. we're hoping to really expand to get back to where we were before the pandemic. That's cool. that's what I would like to see. That's great. Yes. Good. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Flores. Thank you, Ted. As always, it's been so much fun visiting <laughs> with you. I never feel like these are interviews. I always feel like we're just sitting in our living room talking over a I cup know. of coffee. Exactly. <laughs> Until Patrick starts yelling at us, the camera guy. I know. Right. That we're not doing <laughs> we're it properly. And then, <laughs> then we get in trouble. <laughs> that it's timed. Everything's timed. <laughs> right. And when we make our mark. Right. Do we hit our mark with our light? That's always the question. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Been a pleasure. Thank you.